안녕하십니까? Nicolas in it and today we are going to talk about web GPU and how revolutionary it is for the browsers, developers and the web. We are also going to understand why web GPU is a game changer for applications other than video games. A web GPU is a new graphics API that is now available to use in the latest update of Google Chrome. To understand why web GPU is a big deal, let's first understand what web GPU was created to replace. Web GL. There was a time long, long ago where browsers were not as powerful as they are now. Back then, if you wanted to draw anything on the screen of the user, you would have to use Flash, which was a plugin not included by the browser that we had to install. Since the web was relying too much on Flash, which was controlled by a single company, and since Steve Jobs did not want to support Flash on the iPhones, browser makers came up with a solution to get native graphics on the web without using a third party plugin. This is when HTML5 was released and it came with a new HTML tag that was groundbreaking back then. And that was the HTML5 canvas element. The canvas element, as its name implies, created a canvas in which developers could draw images on the user's screen. At first, it only supported the drawing of 2D graphics. It had limited features and it was not so performant. Not good enough for building a high performance game. Then came WebGL. WebGL was created to bring 3D rendering to the web. WebGL was based on OpenGL, an already existing and known cross-platform API for 2D and 3D graphics. OpenGL is basically an interface that developers can use to talk to the GPU, the graphic card of the computer. The thing is that OpenGL is very old. Its initial release was in 1992 and it is not in active development anymore. This means it was created when computers and GPUs were not so powerful and did things very differently. It also means it won't get any new features and because it has been around for such a long time, replacing it with something completely new is easier than updating it. This is why the Kronos Group, an organization behind OpenGL and WebGL, stopped developing OpenGL and came up with Vulkan, a completely new and redesigned graphics API. Apple also came up with Metal, their own graphics API, and deprecated OpenGL on macOS and iOS. And Microsoft came up with DirectX 12 for Xbox and PC. So so this means that we ended up with Vulkan, Metal and DirectX 12, all new, modern, faster, redesigned APIs for computer graphics, but the browsers will still stock using WebGL. Enter WebGPU. WebGPU is a new browser API and it allows websites to talk to Kronos' Vulkan, Microsoft Direct 3D, and Apple's Metal. WebGPU is just a set of new commands that the browser understands. The browser, for now Chrome and soon Firefox and Safari, will take those WebGPU commands and talk to the GPU using the APIs of the machine where the browser is installed. So if you use Chrome on a Linux machine, Chrome will use Vulkan. If you use it on a Windows machine, Chrome will use Direct3D, which is the 3D part of DirectX. And if you use it on Apple, Chrome will use Metal directly. This is a very big deal. This means that websites will now be able to use and have more control over the GPU of the user. As you can imagine, this unlocks a new platform for gaming. It was possible before to run 3D games on the web, but there were performance limitations. If the browser can now use the GPU fully, then running a game from the browser instead of downloading loading and installing it is going to be an obvious choice. Desktop software that uses the GPU, like video and photo editing programs, could become truly 100% web-based, which is good from a user's point of view and the publishers as well. But apart from that, WebGPU can be huge for AI. As you know, GPUs are heavily used on the training and running of machine learning models. This is due to the fact that GPUs are good at doing parallel computations. Using WebGPU, we can access the GPU's ability to perform computations from the browser, which was not possible using WebGL. This means that users could run machine learning models from the browser itself without any of their private data being uploaded anywhere and never leaving their device. That would be so sweet. It would be cheaper for companies to run their AI models since they can use the processing power of the user's device. It would be more private since the data never leaves the device and the AI could potentially run offline. Web GPU support for all sorts of things is starting to increase. Machine learning libraries like TensorFlow.js already have a Web GPU backend. 
3D engines like Babylon JS and 3JS have started supporting WebGPU as well. Even Unity, the game engine, is set to be working on exporting to WebGPU. I suspect this is how most of us will use WebGPU indirectly. Raw WebGPU code is verbose and long. If you're curious, this is some of the code required to render a triangle like this one on screen. So I think that what most of us will do is use a library like 3JS, Babylon.js or TensorFlow.js that supports WebGPU. Keep in mind that WebGPU is not limited to JavaScript only. You can also use languages like Rust with libraries like WGPU to write WebGPU code and you can run that code on the browser of the user by compiling it to WebAssembly. As always, with new technology comes new risk. Nothing is 100% good. There are always the downsides. What what makes WebGPU awesome is also what makes it dangerous. Websites can now talk to your GPU, which means that in theory, a website could use this new feature and use your GPU to mine a cryptocurrency every time you visit it, draining your resources and battery life. Or it could potentially be used for de-anonymizing and tracking users across the web. We will have to wait and see how browsers implement WebGPU. Maybe the user will first have to give permission, just like with geolocation which I think would be a good thing to do. Now I want to know what you think. Did you know about WebGPU? What do you imagine is going to happen? Do you feel comfortable allowing websites to talk to your GPU? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to be looking at them right now. If you found this video useful, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget that if you want to learn things like JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, among many, many others for absolutely free, all you have to do is click the link below to join any of our many free courses that you can take right now for absolutely free with me. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onudo, kamsa hago, saran hago, dao me see you on the next one. Bye bye.